Hi guys, this is uh, my new milling machine, or it's an old milling machine that I recently uh, purchased. It's a Harrison Standard Horizontal and it can be found at that link uh, at layers.co.uk and there is a, a, a good description of the mill there. <clears throat> I don't know the year of manufacture, I'm picking it's probably around uh, the 50s or 60s. Um, I, I didn't pay much for it and it wasn't going when I got it. It had a, uh, a burnt out suds pump and the gear in the bottom of the knee uh, was corroded out, rotted out and so I had to, um, uh, to cut a couple of gears and replace that and there's a little bit of other work to, uh, to do on it but I have used it in anger and uh, uh, I'm very happy with it. So. This series of videos uh, is going to be firstly on the mill itself and then uh, on the uh, manufacture of these two gears for the horizontal feed. <coughs> so, to stand a horizontal mill, um, the, the knee uh, spanner is missing and at the moment I'm just using a, a ratchet spanner to drive that. Unfortunately, the diameter of that square is, um, uh, is not uh, a standard doesn't fit a standard socket metric or imperial so I'm going to have to cut a, um, a square out of a bit of steel so I haven't got around to doing that yet. Um, as I said before the, uh, the the internal gears in the knee here there's a pair of bevel gears just in there. Forward and reverse on the quill there, suds pump there. So at the moment we have uh, the mill running at um, 100 rpm. We have a, uh, a slow feed on the on the table, which is uh, reversible. So let's talk about the, uh, the speed uh, the speed change <coughs> speed change gears. So we have a, a clutch brake arrangement here which stops the drive. Uh, we've got a high-low ratio, high low ratio box here, and then two gear selectors here. So in, <coughs> so in the low ratio we follow this green line here. So in the low speed we have 100, 156, 45 or 64 RPM, depending on the position of these two selectors and in high speed we have 409, 288, 1000 and 639. Right, let's have a look at the, um, uh, the speed selection uh, uh, levers. We have a clutch brake lever which um, operates a clutch and a brake on the, uh, on the uh, rear pulley here and then we've got a high speed, low speed selector of the gearbox at the moment it is at low speed and, and that's high ratio there so we'll start off at low ratio in low ratio we have 45 64 100 or 156 and these are chosen with these two levers here now these two levers are interlocked so you can't move this one unless that's a neutral you can't move that one unless that one is on neutral. So at the moment I've got this one in neutral, so we have two speeds. That speed there, which is 45, and that speed there, which is 64. If we put this one in neutral, then we have these two speeds, 100 or 156. And likewise, if we go to high ratio, then we are on this yellow range, so this is 1000 RPM, and that's um, 639 RPM. If we put this one into neutral, we can select 298 or 409. So there's 298, and, and there's 409. Now, I figure with most of the work that I'll be doing, I'll be using the low ratio and probably um, these, uh, these speeds up here because let's face it with, um, with reasonably large cutters on the quill uh, the surface speed of the, um, 
uh, of the cattle is going to be fairly high and uh, we probably need to get around never need to use any of these high speeds. Now you will have noticed that this quill here is showing a fair amount of run out. Now a lot of that run out is actually in the collars themselves. Uh, not that the collars are not true because I've actually uh, um, faced these off on the uh, on the surface grinder so the ends of the collars are uh, absolutely correct but the collars themselves there is a little bit of shake on the on the uh, diameter of the uh, quill the qu quill is one inch and the ID of the collars is just a little bit over one inch so for example if I loosen the um, loosen the nut here there is a little bit of up and down movement which of course is deliberate but it um, it translates into what looks like run out in fact it makes the run out look worse than it really is having said that there is a little bit of run out on this uh, in this arbor and I've got two options I can either uh, attempt to straighten it and I think most of the run out is due to uh, some damage on the end of the um, of the number 30 taper or I can make a new quill and I've already started that uh, that's the subject of another video uh, quite a few hours work have gone into this and it's not yet completed of course I've got to mill the two drive dogs on that end and also mill the uh, the keyway uh, on the on the arbor and thread the end none of which are a major job and finally um, we have to do something about the feed rate on the table because This um, feed rate here is uh, un really unusable. Uh, with um, the gears in, in this position, this is the driven gear, and that, sorry, that's the driver, and this is the driven gear. In this position, the feed rate is incredibly slow. I don't know what it is in terms of uh, inches per minute, but uh, it is very slow. And of course, if I reverse the gears, then the feed rate becomes um, too fast and unusably fast. The, according to the book, the mill was supplied with uh, several sets of, uh, of change wheels. Um, previous, the previous owner or previous owners have lost those and so I've decided to make some new gears and these, um, I've made these two uh, 52 tooth gears and the manufacturer of those uh, on this mill uh, is the subject of my next video. So um, I've made the gears and I've shot those videos and uh, at this point in time I'm about to uh, start the editing and, uh, and the uh, publishing. The way the, uh, the feed works is uh, in, in this position of the uh, hand wheel uh, we have manual feed and to engage the um, the power feed, uh, you slide the, uh, slide the collar out that uh, engages a spline there and uh, locks the shaft and, uh, and, the, and that engages the, uh, the feed. Uh, I won't run it now because it's too noisy. <coughs> and then we have forward and reverse uh, on here. Quite a, a, a clever a mechanism up inside, up inside the, uh, the feed box. I've, I've actually had all that to bits as well. Uh, when I had the t when I had the table off, so that's quick, uh, a quick rundown on the mill. Um, so the next series of videos will be uh, firstly um, a, a few minutes on making a mandrel to uh, to make the gears, uh, cutting off the gear blanks, and then the uh, third or fourth uh, video will be cutting the uh, the blanks on the uh, on the dividing head, and uh, there's also one video on uh, the method that I used to cut these gears because I didn't have the correct um, the correct indexing plate for the dividing head and so uh, I um, showed a video of an alternative method of uh, cutting a, um, a gear when the when you don't have the right plate and uh, and it did work out reasonably well these these gears are not 100% there is one thin tooth and one fat tooth on each of them 
uh, and that uh, was because on the very last teeth I moved the uh, uh, the handle on the uh, sorry the crank on the uh, dividing head uh, too far on the very last one forgot where it was guessed guessed where it was and got it wrong so there is one uh, fat tooth and one thin tooth. Uh, the error is uh, only two or three thou, but you can see it. But I don't think uh, in this application it's going to make much difference. All right, uh, let's get these videos uh, edited.